there's an article posted today, uh, a paper written by um, the National Institute for Nuclear Physics, uh, the Italian National Institute for Nuclear Physics, in conjunction with a number of other agencies, uh, such as the Colorado Center for Astrodynamic Research. Um, it's hard science, scientists, this is not conspiracy theory stuff, uh, this is all hard science data, and there has been a uh, relatively recent um, significant anomaly uh, which will be of interest to you. Um, the graphic we're looking at is from the the article uh, from the paper and over on the left you'll see the loop current. Okay, You've all probably heard about the loop current at this point. The loop current, uh, warm water comes up into the Gulf of Mexico, makes its way around the tip of Florida, and uh, moves its way across the Atlantic to the North Sea. Keeps Europe nice and warm, relatively speaking. Keeps Reykjavik a great party town. In other words, uh, keeps these countries livable and not, uh, say, under three miles of ice, like most of the Midwest United States was, as recent as 10,000 years ago. Which brings up a point. Uh, people have talked a lot about global warming, uh, which has now changed to uh, climate change, whether you believe it or not. Uh, what is a fact is ice ages have existed. There's plenty of historic precedent for them. They've been studied in depth. And when ice ages start, scientists have speculated that the trigger mechanism, the tipping point, the event horizon, whatever you want to call it, occurs when the global conveyor belt, the loop current, stops functioning. Okay, and once you reach that point, uh, there, there's there's some uh, event horizon beyond which uh, you have ice age that lasts for millennia, and the transition period is often very abrupt. You know, within a couple years. Or Morning from John Moore, uh, who sent me information that Dr. Zangari, a theoretical physicist, doing analysis of the satellite infrared data from the uh, Gulf of Mexico identified a significant break in the normal genesis of the uh, Gulf of Mexico loop current, the energy that drives the escalator from the, the Gulf of Mexico to northern Europe, one of the main drivers of world climate. Uh, a major uh, damage has happened, a cataclysm caused by the British Petroleum oil leak. And by the way, that leak has not by any means been solved by the so-called cap on the riser, which is not connected to the well rupture at the ocean floor. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Bill. I, um, now, uh, I'm speaking from Italy, now uh, it's uh, 11 p.m. I begin my, my work with the University of Colorado uh, that gave me um, the maps of uh, six satellites uh, Topex, Jason, uh, Poseidon, Geosat, Follow on Mersat, and Envisat. And um, these are I, different satellites, in other words, that you're using in order to get access to the satellite yes. data over the Gulf. Yes. And um, uh, I check uh, the data with uh, my system of uh, calculus. Uh, this is SHT calculus. It's um, uh, a calculus based about the theory of categories which I worked since uh, 10 years. So um, after the checking of the data, I observed uh, a fracture in the loop current, which is um, one of uh, the most important components of the Gulf Stream, which carries the warm current into the Atlantic um, circulation of the Gulf Stream. The big announcement right now that, that I have and, and the, the, my research associates is the following. Uh, the Gulf Stream has stopped. Now, in my video you watched, Joe, uh, I make reference to the Gulf Stream being at risk of stopping. Right. As a matter of fact, I think you referenced that it was slowing at that point. Yeah, yes, it was slowing. And, and uh, I work with Dr. Deagle on Genesis, and I'm, I'm a co-host on his third hour every Friday. Uh, one of my research associates got me an, an article written by Dr. Zangari, a PhD scientist uh, in Italy. And Dr. Zangari was publicly saying that the loop current of the Gulf Stream, the North Atlantic Thermal Hailing Conveyor, there's other names for it, was at risk of stopping. And in a few days later, he announced, well, it has stopped. And that was on June 12th this year. And anybody can go to the United States Navy uh, website. Uh, there's a 
particular page, of course, and it's a massive website. And they have images of the temperatures of all the oceans, the satellite images. And you can, you can see right there on the satellite image that the Gulf Stream comes up the east coast of the United States, gets to Cape Hatteras, not far from you there, Joe. Right. Goes east maybe 100, 200 miles and stops. Now, this is incredibly important. Now, I've always known that the Gulf Stream at least affected the weather of North America, inland from the east coast, several hundred miles, and, of course, England, Ireland, Scotland, France, Portugal, and so forth. Glaciologists Jason Box and physicist Basil Singer are in Greenland to see if they can save the planet's glaciers. They want to measure just how fast this one is melting. The Mulan is really the epicenter of our concern because all the water is channeling down into this one point. By measuring the flow rates, we can understand how much water is going into the glacier. Wow! Whoa! Welcome to the epicenter of global warming. It's just bottomless. No light escapes. Basil has volunteered to take the first reading. Cool. Just walk it back. Give me attention. Don't lean towards me, lean back. That I got you. looks extremely I got scary. You. The only way to know how much water is going into the Mulan is by sticking our sensors in and making a measurement right there next to a bottomless pit. The water drops for a whole mile. You would not want to fall down there. There's no escape from a Mulan. Look up! Look up! It's just got danger written all over it. I never thought I'd be standing at the edge of the abyss like this. And I'm so scared. But the information is so important, we actually have to take that risk. Let's make these measurements and get out of harm's way. 
They use a flow meter to measure the water speed. Let's see how fast the water is dumping into this hole. Okay, so we're measuring the flow right now. Dab it in there. Whoa, that's so strong. Look at that. Whoa! There's so much energy here. That's the force of this water. What's the speed? That peaks at 9.4 miles an hour. That's really moving. This must be about a thousand cubic feet per second. This is more melt than I was expecting. On a scale from zero to ten, how serious is this melt issue? It's an 11. In just one day, nearly 42 million liters of fresh water drained down this one Mulan alone. And Jason believes there are hundreds, possibly thousands more of them on the Greenland ice cap. The data sends a chill up Basil's spine, and it's not from the cold. At this rate of melting, Greenland is losing enough water each year to cover Germany a metre deep. Of the freak event in Greenland, where there's been a sudden massive melt in nearly all parts of its ice sheet. These images from NASA show how the ice thawed in just four days. In those four days, the melting area extended to 97% of the ice sheet. That compares to around the usual 50% thaw seen in Greenland over the summer months. Here in Greenland, the summer weather melts the icy landscape. Lakes form on the surface and eventually drain into the ocean, often cascading down at high speed and melting ice deep below. Until recently, exactly how the melting spreads and how long it takes was unknown. To find out, researchers from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute camped out in Greenland. When their seismographs picked up rumbling from under the ice, the water started draining 30 minutes later. The researchers measured the speed of the water current and were amazed to find that it flowed faster than Niagara Falls. In less than two hours, the lake had completely drained away. They are stunned at the accelerated rate that the ice is melting uh, up in Greenland. And if you read the article down here, they're actually a little bit worried about it. Um, understandably so, because the entire ice sheet on Greenland, this is the left side on July 8th, what it looked like, and these satellite instruments have been watching it real close. This is what it looks like on July 12th. So in basically 96 hours, all the ice is gone. It melted at 96 hours. It's absolutely stunning. Here it is again, same thing, July 8th, July 12th. And these are satellite images that have been keeping a real close eye on this. And uh, it's pretty unprecedented for this type of event to occur. That much ice melted in 96 hours. You've got to be kidding me. Three satellites found that 97% of Greenland, the landmass second only to Antarctica for its volume of ice, underwent a thaw never before seen in 33 years of satellite tracking, NASA has reported. Satellite experts at first didn't trust the readings, especially since they showed an incredible acceleration. Over four days, Greenland's ice sheet, which covers 683,000 square miles, went from 40% in thaw to nearly entirely in thaw. 